Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss about mechanical springs from the course DMM1. So this is the main syllabus. In this lecture I am going to cover the introduction part and after that stresses and deflection of helical springs, extension springs, compression springs, springs of fatigue loading, energy storage capacity, helical torsional springs, coaxial springs and leaf springs. These are the remaining parts of the syllabus. Firstly, in this lecture I am going to discuss about springs. The basic definition of the spring is it is defined as an elastic body which deflects under the action of load and returns to its original shape when the load is removed. This is the main definition of the spring. It means when load is applied the spring will deflect and if the load is removed it will come to its original shape. This is the main application of the spring or main uh, usage of the spring. And the important applications, some of its important applications are to cuisine, absorb or control energy due to either shock or vibration as in car springs, railway buffers, aircraft landing gears, shock absorbers and vibration dampers. These are all the some of the main applications of springs and also used for to apply forces as in brakes, clutches and spring loaded valves. For application of forces also we can use springs to control motion by maintaining contact between two elements as in cams and follower. In cam and follower mechanisms we can also use the spring loaded followers to measure forces as in spring balance and engine indicators. We can also measure forces by the help of spring like in spring balances to store energy as in watches, toys etc. In toys and watches we can store the energy in the form of in the spring and it can be used for the movement of the toy or for the in the watches. Let's see the types of springs. The main type of spring is helical springs. The helical springs are made up of wire coiled in the form of a helix and is primarily intended for compressive or tensile loads. These helical springs are two types. One is compressive hel helical spring and one is tensile helical spring because the spring is used to absorb the compressive loads and the spring is used in tension applications and this helix is the shape of the spring which we can see in staircases or in DNA the structure we can see these are called helical springs the wire is wound in this shape to form the helix and if you have these two shapes or eyes these are used for tension applications if it is flattened this is used in compressive applications and here in tension application the coils are closely coiled and here there will be some gap for compressive applications and the second type is conical and volute springs used in special applications where a telescoping spring or a spring with a spring rate that increases with the load is desired. The stiffness increases with the load. In that application we can use this conical springs. It will look like this and these are mainly used in a bat. In TV remote we can see the if you open the back lid we can insert batteries like in these electrical applications we can use these uh, conical springs where the stiffness is increased with the load and the volute springs are uh, used in vehicles in this application we can see these volute springs placed here this is a panger used in military this is used for absorbing the lower shocks that volute springs will look like this And the next one is torsional springs. 
helical type torsional spring is used only in applications where the load tends to wind up the spring here if the load is acted it will wind up the spring okay if the load is acted here this torsional load will cause bending in the wire this wire will bend okay but in this see in this helical springs the load acting is compressive load but the uh, but this failure of this wire if you take the wire the failure of the wire is torsion torsional failure will occur in the wire in this application okay but not compressive or tensile loads or compressive or tensile failure similarly in this case the torsional springs the torsion is applied on the whole spring not the wire the torsion will cause bending in the spring okay the wire sorry bending in the wire the wire will cause bending bending moment and the failure will be caused due to bending moment only or the load carrying will cause will be due to bending moment only the whole spring will take the torsional uh, load okay this is also used in uh, electrical mechanisms this is also a type of uh, torsional spring these are the main application some of the applications of torsional springs you can see the camera battery lid for uh, opening this we can use the spring for the spring action we can use this helical torsional springs and for mo in mouse traps also we, we are using this helical torsional springs next one laminated or leaf springs the laminated or leaf springs are also known as flat springs consists of number of flat plates known as leaves of varying lengths held together by means of clamps and bolts this is the u clamp uh, with the help of bolt these are joined the top one or the larger leaf will have will be wound in the form this part is known as an eye here we can see the application it is used in automobiles for uh, this uh, wire damping uh, or load carrying applications from the differential to the body we can use this these springs these are held together with the help of clamps and bolts disc or bellyweight springs these springs consist of a number of conical discs held together against slipping by a central bolt or tube this is the placement of the discs the discs are placed one over the other in opposite fashion like this and these are joined by a central bolt or a tube for holding all these together these are used for uh, those uh, spring action these discs and there are also some of the special purpose springs which are uh, air or liquid springs rubber springs and ring springs these are uh, used for special applications these air or liquid springs can be used in compression used as a compression springs in industries this is the uh, air or compression springs which will look like a bellow and this is uh, these rubber springs these are used in some special applications and these are uh, the ring springs these are also alloys alloy of piston rings you see right in those applications that like that piston ring this uh, spring will also act these are some special purpose springs 
now see the terminology in compression springs the terminology used for compression springs solid length when the compression spring is compressed until the coils come in contact with each other then the spring is said to be solid you see here when the spring is totally compressed when there is no gap between the springs then the total length will be the solid length you can calculate this solid length by multiplying the wire diameter with the number of coils wire diameter with the number of coils 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 into this wire diameter will give you the solid length this is the equation use it to find out the solid length of the spring ls is equal to n dash into d where n dash is the total number of coils and d is the diameter of the wire and see free length the free length of a compression spring is the length of the spring in the free or unloaded condition if the, if the spring is in unloaded condition the overall length if you calculate that will be the free length this p will be the pitch and see compressor length compressor length is defined as the axial length of the spring which is subjected to maximum compressive force this p max is the maximum force that uh, the spring can withstand and this length at that maximum load carrying capacity the uh, the length of the spring is called compressor length okay total this gap the total gap we can calculate by using this relation n dash minus 1 the total n dash will be the number of coils and the gaps will be the number of coils minus 1 there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 there are 7 coils the gaps will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are 6 gap uh, only 6 gap between them so oh, that 6 into gap between adjacent coils will give you the total gap okay the total gap you will find out by using this relation next see free length and spring index free length is the defined as the axial length of an unloaded helical compression spring the free length is the total length in unloaded condition we can get the free length by adding the compression length with the deflection we can get the free length or in terms of solid length we can get that solid length plus this gap total gap and this delta will give you the free length these are two types compressor length plus delta or solid length plus total axial gap plus delta this uh, you can give, calculate the free length by using this relation next see spring index the spring index is defined as the ratio of the mean diameter of the coil to the diameter of the wire see this d will be as the mean diameter of the coil this we can find out using di minus di plus d naught by 2 is mean right di plus d naught by 2 and if you find the ratio capital d that mean diameter of the coil to the diameter of the wire okay if you calculate that it will give you the spring index next is spring rate and pitch the spring rate is also called stiffness or spring constant it is defined as the load required per unit deflection of the spring w by d load required per unit deflection of the spring will give you the spring rate or stiffness this is spring rate next pitch the pitch is the gap between the two coils okay the pitch of the coil is defined as the axial distance between adjacent coils in uncompressed state we can find out this using this mathematical relation free length by n dash minus 1 this will be the total gaps and this is the free length free length by this n dash minus 1 that is total number of gaps will give you the pitch of the coil 
this is the main terminology of compressed springs for, for this we can use the textbook of VB Bandari for reference purpose and also RS Kurni and for design data book you can use MD Jalaluddin thank you